Praise the Lord, saints of God. Glory be to God. Blessed be the God and Father of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the righteous. Glory be to God. You know, Jesus conquered everything, whooped everything, overcame everything, defeated everything, even death, hell, and the grave. Glory be to God. Jesus triumphed over Satan and all of his cohorts. He disarmed sickness, disease, poverty, lack, worry, and fear, and anxiety. Amen. Oppression. He disarmed it. Amen. Glory to God. He defeated it, conquered it. And the Bible tells us, amen, glory to God, that he's been given a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, cancer has to bow, sugar diabetes has to bow, amen, aches in your joints have to bow, poverty has to bow, worry, lack, fear, all of it has to bow at the feet of Jesus, at the Lordship of Jesus, Amen. Glory to God. You may be saying, what does that have to do with me? Well, John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus said in the world, you're going to have tests, trials, tribulation, but be a good cheer. Glory to God. Why should I be a good cheer, Jesus? Because I conquered it all for you. Woo! Who did he conquer it for? He conquered it for us. Glory be to God. Well, if he conquered it for us, then why is it still prevalent, amen, and manifested in our life? Well, this is why. He said in his word in John, uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, come unto me, all ye that laden and heavily laden, and I give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Learn of me. Learn how I overcame death, hell, and the grave. Learn how I whooped the devil and conquered and defeated him. Learn how I rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Come learn of me. Come learn of me. Not of religion, tradition. No, come learn of me. Woo, glory to God. And you'll find rest for your soul. See, it's in learning of him that we access his victory, that we access his rest. Oh, glory to God. Learn of him. And see, if we're going to learn of him, that means we're going to have to hear him, amen, as though he's always right. He know more than we do. His way is the best way. The only way can't be another way. Amen. Glory to God. We, we have to come to him and hear him as though, amen, he's always right. And we have to receive what he say without protest, argument, and without wishing it was different. See, this is where many Christians fail to receive from the Lord. See, they come to him and they request his help. Amen. But guess what they don't do? They don't accept his treatment of their case. Amen. When he said, love your enemy, they choke on that. When he said, give, and it shall be given unto you, they choke on that. Amen. When he said, don't forsake the assembly of the saints as the manner of some is. See, they don't, they choke on, they don't accept his treatment without protest, argument, or without wishing it was different. Just think if you went to the doctor with that kind of attitude. Amen. You requested his help. Amen. He filled out a prescription and told you to go to the drugstore and, 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 and get your medicine. And you walked out the door complaining. I ain't going to no, get no prescription. I, it should have been enough me coming to the doctor. Well, until you follow his direction, and accept his treatment, you ain't going to feel better. Amen. Glory to God. Well, it's the same way coming to the Lord. Amen. Ain't no sense of coming to him if he tell you what to do and you ain't going to accept his treatment of your case. Your case is going to remain the same until you do what he say, until you accept what he say without protest, argument, without wishing it was different. That's when Jesus reproduce himself and change your situation. Woo, glory be to God.
I used to argue with the Lord. I come to him, you know, out of my frustration, out of my situations and circumstance. But but then when he tell me what to do, I'll choke on that. I'll try to amend it, adjust it, adapt it to my convenience, but to my routine. Amen. And it never worked. Amen. Glory to God. Until I start coming to him like he's always right, like he know more than I do, like his way is the best way, can't be another way. Amen. And when I receive what he say without protest, argument, without wishing it was different, that's when he showed up. That's when he changed my case. Woo. That's when he converted every test into a testimony. Woo. Glory be to God. And he'll do the same for you. Amen. If you will come to him, amen, and, and request his help and accept his treatment of your case without protest, argument, without wishing it was different. He'll convert your test into a testimony. He'll convert all your trials into triumphs. Woo! Nobody in the Bible who came to Jesus and requested his help and accepted his treatment of their case without protest, argument, without wishing it was different, amen, remained the same, and you won't be the first one. Oh, glory to God. Woo, I believe we're going we're gonna to have, boy, some miracles going to take place tonight. I'm telling you, I just sense it in the spirit. All day long, the Lord been dealing with me about doing unusual, rare, extraordinary things in the lives of his people. The Lord told me today in prayer, he said, the church is my bride and I love my bride and I care for my bride. I protect my bride. I defend my bride. I'm in love and jealous with my bride. That's what he said. Amen. So I know he's going to do something unusual for his church tonight. Whew, glory to God. So sit here expecting the Lord to minister to you in the area of your need. Whatever that need is, amen, you're going to have an encounter with Jesus tonight for through his word for a change of story. He's going to change your story tonight. He's going to make you a story to be told. Amen. Glory be to God. Now, nobody, absolutely nobody who came to Jesus, requested his help, amen, and, and accepted what he said, without protest, argument, without wishing it was different, remain the same. And you won't be the first one. Amen. Look here with me if you would. Amen. Just go, you know, just to verify my statement. No one who came to Jesus requested his help, accepted his treatment of their case without protest, argument, without wishing it was different. No one remained the same. Mm. Glory to God. A testimony was that, amen, I have a change of story. Jesus changed my story. Woo, glory to God. Now watch this. I'm going to show you. Now, go here with me to Luke chapter 17. Get ready tonight. Amen, particularly those of you, amen, who, uh, who've been dealing with some kind of illness, in, in, uh, attack on your body. Get ready to receive your healing breakthrough tonight. And those of you who are being challenged financially, get ready to receive your financial breakthrough tonight. Listen, the Lord wants to heal you and prosper you. He, he really do love his church. He, he don't want us depending on nobody else but him. He jealous with us. Amen. Woo, glory to God. See, we just got to learn how to receive from him. It's not a matter of him giving. It's a matter of us receiving. The Bible says in John chapter one, verse one, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And verse 11 says, the word came unto his own. See, Jesus is looking for his own. Woo, he got healing, financial breakthroughs for his own. Third John chapter one, verse two, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper, be in health, even as your soul prosper. So when Jesus want to heal somebody, when he want to, when we want to prosper us, he, he sent his word first. His word is the forerunner of all of his interactions, of all of his manifestations, of all of his blessings. Woo, he sent his word. He came unto his own, but his own received him not. 
but to many as received him, what happened to them? To them gave he the power to become sons of God. Amen. See, if you're going to become healed, if you're going to become prosperous, if you're going to become free, you have to engage the word with your soul. And how do you engage the word with your soul? James chapter 1 verse 21, receive with meekness. See, without protest, argument, without wishing it was different, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. Woo! That's the prescription. That's the remedy of receiving from Jesus. It's how we receive his word, what he say. Now watch this. Go there to Luke 17. He go 10 lepers. They had this coronavirus type of disease. They had to practice social distancing. They had an incurable disease. Watch this. Now notice verse 11. Luke 17 verse 11. The Bible says, and there came to pass, notice now, as he went to Jerusalem, he passed through the midst of the Samaritans of Galilee, and he entered into a certain village. Watch this. There came to him, watch this, 10 lepers, which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. See, they come into Jesus, and they are requesting his help. Now, the next thing they had to do is accept his treatment of their case without protest, argument, without wishing it was different. So when he tell you to forgive somebody, to love your enemy, pray for him, do him good, bless him. When he tell you to give, not to forsake the assembly of the saints. When he tell you to continue in prayer. See, we can't wish that was different. We can't receive that in light of our conveniency. Hmm. Man, this healing costed Jesus his life. It's going to cost us something. Prosperity cost. The Bible says in, 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 in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, Jesus became poor so that we through his poverty could become rich. We look at that. We think that's free. Man, this stuff ain't free. It's very costly. As free as salvation sounds, it's not free. It's going to cost you your faith. And your faith going to require you to do something with your thoughts and with your words. It's going to require you to conform to what Jesus say. That's the work of faith, conforming in thought, word, and action to what Jesus say. And that's a work. Amen. This stuff ain't free, y'all. It's very costly. I said it's very costly. Amen. Glory to God. So I don't know what a lot of people been listening to, but faith always require you to do something. Faith always require you to be responsible. Faith makes you responsible. And God can only perform his promises to the degree that we believe him. Amen. And faith is a work. James chapter two, verse 20 says, faith without works is dead. Love is a work. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews 6 verse 10 that God is not unrighteous to forget your good works and labors of love. Love is a work, y'all. It ain't some emotion, some passion. No, it's a work. It's a work of you choosing to, to will somebody good. Amen. Glory to God. Independent of how you feel and how they treat you. That's a work. Amen. Prayer is a work. It's a labor. Amen. Colossians 4 verse 12 talks about a brother named Ephoritus who, who, who was fervent in prayer, laboring in prayer. Amen. That the, the church of Colossae walked perfect in the will of God. See, laboring fervently in prayer. Amen. Prayer is a work. Faith is a work. Love is a work. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Glory be to God. Amen. Now watch this. So we got to put it into work. It's not hard work. It's thought work mostly. It consists of thought work. Amen. Jesus said, amen. Glory to God. And, 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 and all through the scriptures. Now watch it. Let me, before I get off, let's go over here because I want to help 
you receive your healing and your financial breakthrough. Amen. Now watch this. Notice they came to Jesus, these 10 lepers. They requested his help. Have mercy on us. All right. But then next, they got to accept what he say. They got to accept his treatment of their case without protest, argument, without wishing it was different. And that's going to determine if they receive they heal it. Now watch this. Notice. They said, have mercy on us. Amen. Glory to God. Look at verse 14. The Bible says, and when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourself to the priest. Now watch this, y'all. See, they at, Jesus is asking them to do something that's not convenient. Because they had, they, at this particular time, they wasn't allowed to be in public settings around people. But Jesus is telling them to go do something. Amen. Glory to God that their convenience is telling them not to do. Public policy is telling them not to do this. But Jesus is telling them to do this. Now watch this. And the Bible says in verse 15, Amen. Glory to God. Where, 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 verse 14. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. Now you don't see nowhere in that scripture where they argued, debated, or questioned what he told them to do. Hmm. See, we got to learn how to give the word first place. I said, we got to learn how to give the word first place. I said, we have to learn how to give the word what Jesus say first place. Glory to God. See, when he tell us what to do, that's got to be the final say on everything. Amen. Glory to God. See, Jesus know everything. He write about everything. His way is the best way. The only way can't be another way. He was the only one that was tempted like me and you in every point, but didn't sin. The only one. Amen. So he, so he was always right about everything. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's where our confidence is coming from is when we come to him and he tell us what to do. But it's, it's in most cases, it's going to be contrary, amen, to how we feel, what it looked like, and what we're used to, or what we want to do. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Glory be to God. But if you want this blessing, if you want this breakthrough, Amen. It's connected to how you receive what Jesus say. You can't receive it grumbling, murmuring. You can't receive it with that kind of attitude. You got to receive it joyfully, thankfully, gladly. Whew. Glory that he spoke to you. Woo. Glory to God that he committed himself to tell you what to do. Woo, glory to God. If he didn't, if he didn't want to change your story, if he wasn't committed to your good, he wouldn't even told you what to do. Woo! Glory to God. When he tell you what to do, that means he committed. Glory to God. Hey, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. I remember when, you know, I was being challenged with 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 uh with you know you know, this, this attack on my body, man. I mean, you know, for like two, three weeks, you see, uh, you know, uh, the, the enemy would try to attack my back. Why well, I couldn't even get out of bed sometime. I remember one time I, you know, it, it, I woke up and man, I tried to move. Woo. Man, my back said, you better not even move an inch today. That's what he told me. And then I said, boy, if I could just reach over there to the, to the desk and, and get my Bible, there, that'll be the end of this crisis. I did like the woman with the issue of blood. She said, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I should be made whole. 
Woo, glory to God. And I said, if I could just touch my Bible. Woo, glory. See, I had to have an act, an act. Of, see, faith require you to act on what you believe. Amen. See, a lot of people got faith, but they don't act on it. They like that man in in uh, in uh, Acts 14, verse 6 through 10. Amen. There was a man who was crippled from his mother's womb who never had walked. He, he was listening to Paul preach. And Paul, perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand up on your feet. And the man leaped up and walked. See, he had, he had faith right there, amen, to be healed. But if Paul hadn't recognized that, hadn't perceived that, he would have left that service crippled. Why? Because he didn't act on the faith that he had. And that's why it's so important to be in the midst of a minister, amen, who can perceive the degree of faith that you have, amen, and require you to act upon it. That's why I don't lay hands and pray over a lot of people because I, I teach them the word and I know faith in their heart and all they have to do is act. Amen. And if you keep ministering to them and getting it for them, you're really hurting them more than helping them. Amen. Glory to God. Now, you know, when the Lord tell me, pray for them because it's an emergency crisis and they ain't going, you know, and, and, and I go ahead and obey him. Glory to God. But in most cases, he wants you to receive amen from him. Amen. Glory to God. Like he's your Lord. Whew. Glory to God. <laughs> Holy Ghost just said that to me. He wants you to have personal experiences with him so you can know him for yourself. Amen. Glory to God. You know, in John chapter 4, amen, around in verse 29 through 33, the woman uh, with the, with, at the well, amen, you know, she had asked Jesus in verse 14, John 4, 14, give me this water so I can drink and thirst no more. Give me this water, amen, of everlasting life. And Jesus put a condition on, on her receiving. He said, go, go get your husband, amen. See, he was requiring her to be honest. Amen. See, a lot of times people don't receive from the Lord because they're not honest. Amen. And, 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 and the woman said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, you have truly stated. Whew. Glory to God. Amen. She said, he said, you done had five. And the one you with now ain't your husband. Woo. Glory to God. See, see, Jesus got to get us where we honest, where we accept what he's saying without protest, argument, and without wishing it was different. Look, that lady didn't argue with Jesus no more. Amen, glory to God. She said, I perceive you a prophet. Now I need to know how to worship you. Now traditions say we supposed to worship over here and in his mouth, but, 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 and Jesus stopped her. He said, listen, it's time out for tradition. Woo, you don't go, you ain't got to worship over here, over there. That God is looking for those who worship him. Verse 24, John 4, 24, in spirit and in truth. Oh, if he can just get us honest. Whew, glory to God. And the woman said, okay, that's it. She dropped her water pot. She left and she found all the men in them city and said, hey, woo, I done met a man. Come see him. I done met a man who done told me everything. Woo, he know everything. He write about everything. Woo, hoo, hoo. glory to God. And the Bible said at this woman testimony of her encounter with Jesus, what happened? The whole, all the men went out to the city and met Jesus and sat at his feet and heard the word. Amen. And they told the woman, glory to God, in verse 32, they said, now, you know, hey, hey, we, we don't need your testimony of him no more. Why? Because we done heard him for ourselves. Woo! So the Lord will use other people, amen, to get you to him. But then his ultimate objective in getting you to him through other people is so you can have an encounter with him and know him for yourself. Woo! Glory to God. Praise God. Man, it's going to be powerful tonight. I just started out. I ain't welcome nobody. For, forgive me. I, I want to welcome you out to the Word Encounter service tonight. I appreciate you, amen, joining in tonight, taking time out of your day to invest in your destiny through.
through the word. Amen. Go get your Bible, your pen, and a notepad. Amen. So we can, amen, follow along in scripture. Amen. Glory to God. So this word can 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 minister to you, find a resting place in your heart, produce faith and confidence in you where you can't be tore away from it no more. Can't no situation how you feel, what people are doing to you, separate you from the word that you're hearing and that you're seeing. Glory to God. Jesus going to reproduce himself in your life tonight. For this cause is the Son of God manifested. John, 1 John 3, verse 8, so he can destroy the works of the devil in our lives. Amen. Whatever working of the devil is that's at work in your life is due for an encounter with Jesus for a destructive of his force today. Amen. Now, watch this. These, these men came to Jesus, requested his help. Amen. And Jesus told them, go show yourself to the priests. And the Bible said, as they went, as they went, as they went, they were healed. Are you seeing this today? Amen. See, the healing didn't manifest until they acted on what Jesus said without protest, argument, without wishing it was different. Amen. That's, that's where the, the, the process get choked at. That's where the clog in the pipe is. It, it's in the, the attitude of your heart in hearing what Jesus say. It, it, it's in your attitude in accepting what he say without protest, argument, without wishing it was different. Amen. See, see David, David said something. Watch this. What is this Holy Ghost right here, y'all? Look here with me, if you would, to Psalms 51. Psalms 51. Amen. This was David, man. He had got in trouble with the Lord and, man, did all kind of heinous, crazy stuff, like some of us do sometimes. Amen. And see, this is the trickery of sin, the deceptionness of it. Like, uh, what's that, Romans 7, 13, it talks about the, the, the deceivableness of sin. Exceedingly, uh, where, where is that, Romans, uh, let's look at uh, sin, got it, it, it's, it's, uh, it talks about Romans 7, where is that, Holy Ghost? Romans 7, verse 13, so then that which is good made, uh, uh, made death unto me, God forbid, but sin that it may appear sin working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. See, when it becomes exceedingly sinful, then you don't let Jesus tell you how it is. Mm. But until it become exceedingly sinful, you, you ain't letting Jesus, you letting your own opinion tell you how it is. Mm. But when you let Jesus tell you how sin is, how, 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 how exceedingly sinful, heinous, destructive it is, amen, that's when you're going to do something about it. Amen. Glory to God. Now watch this. I don't know why I went there, but I, I, yeah, I know now. The Holy Ghost was showing me. Okay, now, David, it, his sin had become exceedingly sinful to him. Notice until it became exceedingly sinful. Look, he 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 was trying to cover it up. He he was trying to, you know, you know, he had the boy Uriah killed because the girl was pregnant. You know, and he 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 wanted to pretend like, you know, that was that was their baby. So he brought the boy off the battlefield and told him, you know, go be with your wife. But this boy was so committed. He was such a committed, devoted soldier. Amen. To his captain David. That he, instead of going home sleeping with his wife, he, he slept by the door. Amen. And the, and the king opened the door and there he was. He said, ain't you, did I tell you go be with your wife? You see, that's how committed and faithful he was. Amen. How can I sleep with my wife? Well, my fellow soldiers are out there losing their life. See, that's where David was to be. He never would have saw uh, uh, Bathsheba on the rooftop had he been where he's supposed to be. 
Amen. Glory. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1, when kings go to war. So if David was a king, he's supposed to have been at the war, not on top of the roof, at home. Amen. A lot of things we get exposed to. A lot of things we see that and hear that we shouldn't see is because we venture out into places, in relationships, in the settings that we shouldn't be in. Amen. Boy, that revelation right there. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. Now, notice. So he 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 had he had uh you know committed this sin, killed a boy. Amen. And, and, and took his wife, you see. And, uh, and so he's trying to cover it up. Why? Because until sin becomes exceedingly sinful, see, you, you'll try to defend it. Oh, that ain't too bad. Everybody do that. You see, I ain't a bad person. See, you compare yourself with others instead of with what Jesus say. See, he got to be the standard. Not what other people get away with. Glory to God. Boy, I done hit a hope. We done hit a gusher now. Amen. Now watch this. Now, see, Jesus, he, he hates sin. He do. Matthew chapter one. See, sin killed him, murdered our Savior. Amen. And that's what he came to do, to take it away. Matthew 1, 21. Amen. God sent forth his son, Jesus, in, to, to, to bless us in turning us away from our sin, Acts 3, 26, in turning us away from it. Amen. See, sin is the cause of the sickness and disease in the world. You may say, I didn't sin. Well, see, you, that's what brought sickness and death in the world. Sin did. Amen. And, and, and so, so that's why you 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 gotta let Jesus tell you how to how to overcome it because it'll introduce itself to you, you see, and it'll make you think you did something wrong. Like in John chapter 9, verse 1, that, that was a man born blind, and the disciples asked, Who sinned? Him or his mother? See, they related the blindness to sin. And Jesus said, Ain't now one of them sin, but this must happen so the works of God may go forth. Jesus said, I'm here to do the work of God. I'm here to get rid of this. Woo, glory to God. Then we see in another case in Mark chapter two, a man that was a, a, a man, he was crippled. He had four friends. They brought him to Jesus meeting on the couch. They couldn't find no way to get in, so they went up on the roof. See, them the kind of friends you need. Friends don't take no for an answer. Friends don't listen to your excuses, and you blaming others. But friends who want you to have an encounter with Jesus through the word so you can have a change of story. Them the kind of friends we need. Amen. So they, amen, they took him in there, and they, they, they took him on top of the roof. They tore off the roof. They let the man down in the couch. Amen. In the midst of Jesus. And the Bible says in Mark 2 verse 7, when Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their, I told you faith has a work. Man, it took a work to get that boy up on the roof, tear up the roof. Let the, that was, that. when Jesus saw their faith, woo, they acts of love. See, faith worked by love. Galatians 5 verse 6. See, see, Jesus saw, amen, the love that they had for his friend and wanting him to get a to, to get healed and be delivered. When Jesus saw their faith working by love, woo, glory. What did he say to the man? He said, be healed. No, he didn't say that first. Look at what he said first. Your sins be forgiven you. Woo! Why? Because if he would have said, amen, take up your bed and walk. If he would have said that first, the enemy would have condemned him. How you gonna act? How you gonna be here? And you got all this sin and all this stuff in your life. See, his faith would have choked. 
But Jesus had to, had to get that condemnation out of his heart so he could believe him when he said, take up your bed and walk. And that's why a lot of times we can be hearing the word, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Jesus took his infirmity, took our infirmities, bore our sicknesses when he died, died on the tree. Psalms, and by his stripes we're healed. Psalms 107 verse 20, he sent his word and healed us and delivered us from all our destruction. But see, our faith won't go out to meet that. Why? Because there's, there's sin and condemnation. Jesus got to get that dealt with. That's why Romans chapter 8 verse 1, there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. See, he got to get you in him and how he loved you on the cross. Woo Glory to God. And see, the way he do that, amen, is when you come to him. See, he get, he get that protest, that argument, that wishing what he say, going to say to you different. He got to get that out of you. Where you receive what he say, amen, as the only way, the best way. Can't be another way. Woo, glory to God. So he told that man, your sins be forgiven you. And the Pharisees argued with him. How you going to forgive somebody's sin? Can't nobody do that but God. But Jesus said, so that you may know that God has given me the power to forgive sin, the ability to forgive sin. Boy, take up your bed and walk. And the man took up his bed and walked. Whew. Glory to God. Can you see the process of healing him? He had to get the sin dealt with. And sin is knowing to do something and, and, and not doing it. Making excuses, blaming others. Amen. See, really sin is, is when you hear what Jesus say without protest, with, with, with protest and argument. See, it doesn't begin, become sin until he tell you to do something and you got that protest and argument in you. That's when it becomes sin. Watch this. We're going to go back over here to David. All right. James chapter 4, verse 17 says, him that know to do right and don't do it is sin. Then first John chapter three, verse four, it says sin is a transgression of the law. So, so in order for me to transgress something, I got to know something. If I don't know it, it ain't no transgression. I remember when Jesus told me to, to, to quit smoking. I was in prison. I got saved. But I was still smoking and getting high. And uh, it would bother me a little bit, but I couldn't figure out. Go to John 15. And everybody I was asking, they, you know, all the other inmates and different other people, even some prisoner guards, officers who were saved, they would say, well, at least you, you, you say you gave your heart to Jesus. And, you know, don't bother with that. The Lord, will, he'll, he'll, he'll work on that. He'll, you know. And, and, and it was bothering me. And I couldn't figure out why. Why is it bothering me when I smoke and cuss and, and want to get angry with these guys? And why is that bothering me? And everybody, they would try to relieve me of my, my conviction and, and my quest to find out why that was bothering me instead of teaching me. See, they didn't know, so they couldn't teach, you know, only what they knew. So they was out there, well, look at so-and-so. He, 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 he saved, he, he teach Bible study, and he still smoke, drink. See, but I, I, I knew something in me was, man, it was getting a hold of me. And then I remember, I'm in my cell, and I asked this other inmate for a light for my cigarette because I didn't have one. And Jesus spoke to me. He said, that bothered me, that hurt me. I said, what? Who was that? He said, that hurt me when you do that. See, then it became sin. Why? Because he spoke to me. So I wasn't innocent no more because I knew it was him. See, look at John 15. Look at verse 22. I didn't have no idea, but, we, but the Lord wants to heal and deliver and prosper his church. Man, he don't want you depending on nobody but him. And see, until he show us how deceptive and heinous sin is, see, see, it'll be things that we, we, we are here 
and, 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 and see different than how he say they are. Mm. Glory to God. Now watch this. This is a good word. Now watch this. Notice uh, 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 John 15 verse 22. Had I not spoken unto you, then you had not sinned. But now you have no cloak for your sin. See, I he speak to you, tell you what to do, and you still got protest, argument, you still wish it was different. That's sin. That's knowing what to do and not doing it. And that's what's blocking the healing and the financial breakthrough. Glory to God. Watch what Job said, Job 36, verse 11. He said, if you obey and serve him, you're going to spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Isaiah 1, 19, if you be willing and obedient. See, not just obedient, but willful, without protest, argument, wishing it was different, you're going to eat the good of the land. Whew. Glory to God. Amen. See, it, it all got to do with coming to Jesus. That's the first step. Requesting his help. That's the second step. And thirdly, receiving what he say without protest, argument, without wishing it was different. Accepting his treatment of your case. When he give you the prescription, thank you, doc. And you go get it filled. Woo! Glory to God. You don't argue, protest, debate. Woo! Glory to God. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Some of you, I'm telling you, tonight is your night to get healed in your body. Tonight is your night for your financial breakthrough. We have some testimony Sunday, amen, uh, from some of our leaders. Amen. We spoke this word yesterday, last week. We prayed for those to receive their healing and their financial breakthrough, and they came back with testimonies. Whew. Amen. Got breakthroughs. Had a testimony call in today from one of our sisters, Sister Julia. She said, amen, the word on love, loving uh, people who do her wrong, choosing to love them independent of how they feel. Said her boss was challenging her and she prayed for her boss. Woo, her boss called her in, gave her promotion and apologized to her. Woo! See, accepting what Jesus say without protest, argument, without wishing it was different. That's when you're going to have a change of story. That's when Jesus is going to manifest. Amen. Woo, boy, this good word encounter tonight. I didn't even know we were going in this direction. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, for the sake of time, let's get back over here with David. Psalms 51. Because we're going we're gonna to plow up some, some stony ground hearts. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to plow them up, pluck out the rocks, and plant some good seed. Amen. You know, a farmer, before he can plant, he got to go glean the field. What do you call it? He got to prep the ground. Amen. I remember, you know, uh, back in the day when we had our, you know, you know Cadillac, our gangster lean. Amen. We, I had a... Amen, a, a, a 1976 uh, Fleetwood Cadillac. I brought it from uh, Conway 20, the country singer. Boy, this thing was, woo, diamond in the back, sun rooftop, digging the scene with the gangster lean. Woo, 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 boy, that thing was bad, boy. Amen. And and and, and, and so, you know, I, 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 it was gold, butterscotch gold. Had leopard top on it, leopard seats in it, and and and, uh, and uh, I, I was driving one day, and uh, man, this girl called me, and and I looked up and and end up hitting, you know, the the the, the uh, uh, a, 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 a wall like in these apartments. I bumped it into the wall, and, and the fender part. So I took it to the painter and, and to the body shop. And, 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 you know, he was telling me he had to keep it, you know, for like two weeks, three weeks. And, and, and I said, man, why you, you got to keep my car that long? Just, man, just a little, little scrape right here. You know, you, you know, you just, you know, you just, 
paint over it. You know, he said, no, it ain't how it work. I said, well, okay, tell me how it work. He said, first, we got to, we got to, we got to do a preparatory. I said, what is that? He said, we got to sand it down. Then we got to, you know, straighten out the little dent, the wrinkle in the, in the, in, and then we got to put this Bondo stuff on it. And then, uh, and then we got to let that set. Then we can paint it. I said, what you got to do all that for? He said, well, the kind of guy you are, when something don't work out right, you don't let people explain. You, 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 they have to deal with the consequences. So I want to do your car right. I don't do it at all because I don't want to deal with you. And I said, well, that makes sense. I said, but tell me why you got to do all that. He said, well, because if I paint over it like it is, he said, when the weather hit it, the sun, the rain, the snow and all that, he said, it's going to break the bond of that paint. That paint ain't going to bond right. Amen. And, and, and as long as the weather hit, it's going to break it up. He said, but if I do this prep work, it's going to receive that paint right. And it's going to stick on there right. And no matter what kind of test, trial, weather conditions hit it, whoa, glory to God, it ain't going to unhook it or separate it. I break it up. I said, that's revelation right there. Amen. Glory to God. And that's the same way with the word of God. Until God prepped the heart. Well, where the heart will accept what Jesus say. Without protest, argument, and without wishing it was different, the promises ain't going to stick. Woo! Amen. Testing trials. You walking out of the boat to go to Jesus like Peter. You're going to start looking at the rain, the storms, what other people saying and doing to you, the feelings in your body, and you're going to sink and not walk to Jesus. Oh, glory to God. But if you'll prep the heart, Woo, glory to God. If you'll just come to Jesus and receive what he's request his help and receive what he say without protest, argument, without wishing it was different, you'll be like the 10 lepers. Why you went, you were healed. Why you were on the go, you were healed. Why you were acting on what he say, you were healed. Woo, glory be to God. Are you seeing this today? Now, watch this because we got to get back over here with David. Because I believe it's a reason why the church, amen, is not receiving healing and a financial breakthrough. When Jesus said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. But then he conditioned it, even as your soul prosper. So the soul has to prosper to the degree that I need the financial breakthrough and the healing, even as. And your soul can only prosper according to James 1.21. Lay aside the, 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 the superfluity of the flesh and receive with meekness. See, he said, lay aside all naughtiness, superfluity of the flesh. Don't let your flesh determine if what Jesus said is right. No. Let how he loved you on that cross when you were dead wrong. Let that determine if he's right. Woo, if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. Lay aside all naughtiness, superfluity of the flesh, and receive with meekness, without protest, argument, without wishing it was different, what Jesus say. And that'll save your soul. And your soul will deliver, unload on you, your prosperity and your health. Woo, hoo, 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 hoo. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. God will daily load you with his benefits. According to Psalms, what's that, 68, verse, what's that, 18 or 19, verse 12. He, well, verse 18, he, he daily loads us with benefits. Psalm 66, 19. He'll bag his truck up, amen, full of health, prosperity, and wealth. Amen, glory to God. And he'll let you just, amen, take your, your tow motor and, and, and load all you need on. Amen. <laughs> glory to God. Woo. Woo. Glory. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Now, watch this. I got to get over here. Now, David, see, until Jesus showed him how heinous and deceptive and destructive his sin was, amen, he, 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 he really didn't repent. But when he saw how destructive it was, how it hurt the Lord, and how it hindered him from giving to him his best and highest, notice what he said. 
in, in, in verse, verse 7. Purge me with hyssop, Psalm 51, verse 7, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to heal. Watch this. Watch this, y'all. See, we, 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 we miss this verse right here. Make me to hear. Make me to hear. Make me to hear right. Woo! Well, how is hearing right, David? This is how hearing right is. With joy and gladness. Woo! Glory to God. See, that's what separated Adam and Eve when they sinned in the Garden of Eden. They wasn't hearing right, so they went and hid from God. Woo! Sin won't let you hear right. Woo! You don't even want to be around the Lord to hear nothing. Woo! But when he purged you, when he washed you in his blood and cleansed you from that unrighteousness, woo! You begin to hear right. How do you hear right? With joy and with gladness. Woo! Look there in Acts chapter 2. Look at verse 41. Notice they were hearing right and receiving right. Look at Acts 2. Look at verse 41. The Bible says in verse 41, then they gladly, 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 gladly. What did they do gladly? Receive this word. Amen. See that that, that that that's what we, we we you see, and when you look at sin like that, it 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 won't let you hear right. Mm. It'll get you arguing with the Lord, debating, comparing yourself with others. But when you let Jesus tell you how heinous your sin is, how destructive it is, how it dull your hearing, and keep you from receiving, oh, you ready to hear right now? Glory to God. Woo! David said, man, this stuff messed up my hearing. Woo! Make me make, make me to hear joy and gladness. <laughs> that the bones which you have broken, amen, will, will, will rejoice. Woo! Glory to God. Listen to him, y'all. Then, then he said in verse 10, created me, blot out my sins, in my iniquity, verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew in me a right spirit. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. And then verse 12, oh, it's, it's restoration time now, y'all. Woo, the end result, oh, glory to God, of receiving forgiveness and being restored to the Lord. Is restoration finna take place in your life? Your healing finna take your restoration to your health, your restoration to your wealth. Oh, it's finna land on you right now. Notice what he said there in verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Woo, glory. And uphold me with your free spirit. What you gonna do, David, with this restoration and, and, and with the Holy Ghost? I'm gonna go teach others. How to hear you right. I'm going to teach others woo, how to hear you without protest, without argument, and without wishing it was different. Oh, glory be to God. Are y'all seeing this today? Glory be to God. Now, go over here to one other scripture. We're going to close on this. Because I just believe that the Lord wants to heal. Some of you already done received. Amen. John chapter 4. Amen. And he wants he wants to bless his people financially. But you got to hear him right. Amen. Now notice here in John chapter 4. Let's pick it up in verse 46. And Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee where he made the water wine. There was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Galilee, watch this, he went unto him and he besought him that he would come down and heal his son for he was at the point of death. See, he, he came to Jesus and he requested his help, just like the 10 lepers in Luke 17. They came to Jesus and they requested his help. But watch this. Whether you receive from him has to do with how you hear from him. See, are you hearing 
without protest, argument, and without wishing it was different? Are you accepting his treatment of your case? Or are you debating with him? Mm. Watch this. Now notice the difference between this man and the 10 lepers. When Jesus told the 10 lepers, go show yourself to the priest, they didn't have no protest, no argument. They didn't even wish it, it was different. They accepted Jesus' treatment of their case. And the Bible says why they went, they were healed. Watch this. Verse 47. Verse uh, Jesus said, and, 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 and healed his son, for he was at the point of death. Verse 48. And when Jesus said unto him, except you see signs and wonders, you won't believe. Verse 50. G the man said to Jesus, verse, verse 49. The nobleman said unto him, sir, come down here. My, ch my son is dying. See, he ain't hearing right. He got protest, argument, wishing it was different. See, he want Jesus to go down there. And Jesus trying to have him, get him to have an encounter with his word. Amen. So if it ever happened again, he'll learn the process and he can repeat it. Amen. And get the same blessing. Woo! And then he can help others receive. Woo, glory to God. It's a teaching method. It's a teaching element in every miracle Jesus do. Mm, he's always trying to train you to what he say and let it be the final say. Woo, glory to God. Now watch this. The man said, come down here, my child is dying. Are you seeing this? Watch what Jesus said, verse 50. Jesus said, go your way. Your son ain't dying. He living. Woo! Glory to God. Watch what happened. And the man did what? Believe the word that Jesus has spoken unto him and went his way without protest, argument, and without wishing it was different. Woo! He accepted Jesus' treatment of his case. Notice in verse 51. And while he was going down, his servant met him and said unto him, your son liveth. Whoa, when did this healing process start? Verse 52. Then inquired of them the hour that he son began to amend. And they said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Verse 53. So the father knew. What did he know? That that was that that was, that that was the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, your son liveth and himself believed in his whole house. See, when he accepted Jesus' treatment of his case, Jesus manifested the healing and the financial breakthrough. Are you seeing this today? Oh, stretch your hand towards the screen. Father, I thank you today. Everyone up under the sound of my voice who comes to Jesus, requests his help, and accepts his treatment, receive the desire of their heart. Your healing and your financial breakthrough has just manifested in your body and in your life. Be healed and be financially blessed from this day forward. Jesus Christ has made you whole and Jesus Christ has blessed you. Now receive it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, they have already repented of their sin as the word was being proclaimed to them. Decisions and adjustments were made. Oh, I come against the spirit of condemnation, guilt, and shame. Leave their lives today in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Father, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the anointing that destroys every yoke, that lifts every heavy burden, rest upon them and remain upon their lives, driving out every infirmity, driving out every pain, Driving out worry, fear, 
and all financial lack and insufficiency. Let not this week end before testimonies and praise reports be declared and told by them. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Woo, the Lord is faithful. I said he's faithful. I said he's faithful. I said he's faithful. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 24, faithful is he who has promised and called you and faithful is he who will do it. Oh, he will do it. He has done it tonight. Amen, because he is faithful. Amen. Glory be to God. Well, amen. We got a lot of things coming up at the ministry this week. Please refer to our Facebook page. Amen. So you can get hooked on. Amen. Prayerfully. Amen. And participation wise in these events and services that are coming up this week. Amen. Glory to God. Again, join us tomorrow on the corporate prayer line. The Lord spoke this to me today. He said corporate prayer is a designated place where the Lord uh, re re supplies, supplies a greater measure of his spirit to prevent things from happening and to react to things that are happening. Mm, proactive, reactive. There's a supply of the spirit on corporate prayer. Woo, glory to God that will cause him to respond on our behalf. Amen. Glory to God. So don't miss corporate prayer. Engage that setting. Jesus said, man always ought to pray and not to faint. And corporate prayer is a place where he supplies a supply of his spirit to deal with things proactively and reactively. Amen. Glory to God. We see this, amen, in Philippians 1.19. Paul said, I know I'm coming out of this trouble that I'm in because of your prayer and the supply of the spirit. Ephesians 4, 16, every joint has a supply. So when you're missing, there's a supply missing. Mm. But when you engage the corporate prayer setting, oh, that supply is down. Whew. Glory to God to cause proactive and reactive occurrences and demonstrations in your life. Amen. Glory to God. Well, I love you so much. Amen. Don't forget, amen, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. He loves what kind of giver? A cheerful giver. So go ahead and get your offerings ready, your tithes ready. Amen. And so into this service. This is the third year that uh, uh, Word Encounter been on. Amen. Every Tuesday for three years, God has been faithful to supply us a word Amen. Glory to God for our situations in need. Amen. Word Encounter celebrating three-year anniversary. Amen. Glory to God. So go ahead and get your tithes and offerings. Amen. Ready. The information is there on your screen. Amen. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 6 through 8, let him that is taught in the word communicate with them that have taught him. Mm. Have you been taught in the word? Well, it's your time to communicate to those who have taught you, mm. contributing to their support. And the Bible says in Galatians 6, verse 7, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. And verse 8 says, when you sow to the spirit, you shall reap life everlasting. You can't do what Jesus say without protest, argument, and wishing it were different and remain the same. No, he's going to manifest in your life. Glory to God. So go ahead and obey the Lord where your tithes and offerings is concerned. Amen. Glory to God. I'll pray over you giving. Father, I thank you for those who obey you with a cheerful heart concerning giving of their tithes and their offerings. Lord, let the grace of God come up on them, oh God, to take them from enough to plenty so they can continue to be a blessing to many. I decree the prophetic word over the house over them concerning Psalms 138 verse 8, that you are perfecting, improving, making better, and completing the good works that you began in them. You are perfecting the things 
that concerning them, concerning their household, concerning their business, concerning their careers, their marriages, their families, their children, their ministries, their callings, their health. You are perfecting the things that pertain to them. In Jesus' name, live in that perfected state, in that improved state, in that better state, in that complete state. In Jesus' name. Well, I love you so much. I'll see you in service. Bible study, corporate prayer this Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Amen. And we'll see you on the corporate prayer line tomorrow, 6 a.m. I love you. It's always our prayer to our Heavenly Father. Amen. That our Father's richest and best be yours.